All right, folks, we are live, living color right here on the Sports Talk Nation. Michael Cohen here with you, and we got a great show for you today. We are going to talk about the New York Yankees, as right now they find themselves in a dogfight for the AL East lead. And after having that great run here at the end of April going into May, they ha- they have slipped a little bit here on this road trip to Texas and Kansas City. Kind of a weird road trip, especially with the uh, couple of games that were also canceled against the Washington Nationals, but they will come home for what will be a huge homestand against the Anaheim Angels and the Houston Astros, the Yankees, at 31-15, one of the best records in baseball, and I think it's safe to say that the AL East, as far as being competitive is concerned, is now just a two-team race between Boston and the Yankees, as if we didn't know that was going to happen. Joining me today to talk about the Yankees and that much more on all that involving baseball, for that matter, is the one and only Karen Van Cat. Karen, how are you doing? Okay, Mike. How you doing? Doing great. Glad to have you back on. So, thank you. Last last time we we spoke, uh, you know, the Yankees were in the midst of that great run where they were, you know, rallying off what a nine ten straight victories in a row, and they're getting ready for that big series against Boston. And really, after that series, and there was a great series for the Yankees. It's been kind of it's, they, they've had some stumbles here and there, a stumble against the A's, uh, against Kansas City, and then the last couple of days, days against Texas. I think for me, a couple things stand out, both good and bad. I would, I'll start with the good. One, you're getting a lot of production out of guys that weren't producing in the lineup earlier in the year. Guys like Neil Walker, uh, Tyler Austin, those guys have been hitting the baseball very well uh, of late. Uh, you're also, of course, seeing Giancarlo get more and more comfortable in the middle of this lineup. So for me, from the lineup standpoint, you're seeing more guys contribute more than just, you know, early in the year it was just DD and occasionally Judge. And, of course, Andahar, now with, with Torres, who has been just absolutely on fire, is just kind of lengthened this lineup. So, for me, it's nice to see from the Yankees' standpoint how everybody is really clicking up and down throughout that lineup. Absolutely. And they did a stat yesterday um, during the game. The Yankees' seven, eight, nine hitters mm-hmm. are number one in the league. I mean, I mean, in baseball. Not just the league. Baseball with production, mm. with runs and everything. So um, think about it. Who's always at the bottom? Even Romine is back in almost 350. I mean, so when he's in there, so you got like Romine when he's in there, you've got, like you said, Neil Walker they've had at the bottom. Um, Andrew Hart, I think, was closer to the bottom. And um, Torres, bat and knife. I mean, mm-hmm. do you, everybody keeps saying, I'll move him up to number one, move him up to number one. Why? Mm. Why break up the apple cart right now? Do I, you know what I mean? He's comfortable. Mm-hmm. Let him get some more bats as a rookie before you start putting him in the number one. So I'm putting the pressure on him because mm-hmm. um, he's coming through. And the way the lineup, like you said, goes changes over so much. By the time they get to him, he's batting second or third. Maybe he's leading an off an inning anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing with leading off an inning, their first batter, it happens the first inning mm-hmm. most of the time. Maybe another, maybe another inning because of the way, you know, things start out. So, um, I mean, I think eventually this kid would be your number three hitter at some point, maybe. I don't know, as he matures. Maybe not this year, but you know what I mean? I mean, like, mm-hmm. he's, he's got it all. He does. He's got a good eye. He mm-hmm. doesn't fish out of the zone that often. Mm-hmm. Um, he, now he's showing his power, mm-hmm. um, which nobody expected. All of them, everybody, even they talked to some of the guys on the team. Um, they didn't expect this. Not that you want him to be the home run hitter. I want him to just keep hitting, period. Yeah. Be a 300 hitter. Those home runs will come. Like, the, the right now, they're coming in bunches for him. Did you, see, did you see the home run the other day against Texas? And he's had five home runs now in the last five games on this road trip where the kid, mm-hmm. like, dives over, dives over the railing to make, to make the catch in center field. That was, that was crazy. But yeah. uh, <laughs> that, this guy has just been an absolute machine. And I agree with you. You know, why would you want to mess with where he is right now? He's, he's in a good, comfortable spot. Yeah, it's batting ninth in the order. You know, a year from now, if we're going to sit here and have this discussion, yes, Torres is probably going to be your number two hitter, maybe even a number three hitter, depending how you want to move Judge and Stanton around in the lineup. Um, but right now, he's good. He's comfortable for where, where he is right now. You leave him be. Uh, I remember, and I know this is a completely different situation, completely different hitter. I'm going to use Jose Reyes as an example. I remember when the Mets brought up Jose Reyes and he was hitting well, and they had him like batting eighth in the lineup when he was a rookie. And then when they put him in the Toledo spot, he went to a big time slump. Okay, why would you want to move that kid into a situation that he's not going to be comfortable? Just let him let him 
gets some at-bats, only has 93 at-bats. You know, if we're sitting here, he has 200, 250 at-bats in the ninth spot, and you want to move him up in August just for a, a game, two games, just see what happens, go right ahead. But I'm not going to sit here and jump in the gun and say, okay, this is my number two hitter for the next 15 years. Let's do it now. Just wait. You know, let the kid get comfortable first. Exactly. That's how I feel. And first of all, you're a leadoff batter. You want to get on base. Yep. You're not expecting a home run out of the leadoff batter. And if Torres is going to be have some power and some punch, hit some doubles and all that, usually your leadoff mm-hmm. hitter looks at a lot of pitches. For Gardner, as bad a year as he's having, he still looks at He's 3-2 almost every time up. So he gives everybody else in the lineup a chance to look at the pitches. So that's what your number one hitter is. I don't know if Glyber has I haven't really paid attention. Sure. To how many pitches is he really seeing in an at-bat? It seems like I don't think he goes 3-2 that often. Um, I think he's been getting because, well, he's been on fire, so he feels comfortable he's been hitting. Um, I, I'd have to look at stats. I don't have my uh, let, 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 my In fact, let, let me pull up the play-by-play play from yesterday. Okay, I'm going to take a look at this because it's, it's, right. it's a good – it's a good point you bring up about how many pitches he's taking per at-bat. Uh, let's see here. Let me go here. His first at-bat, third inning, he grounded out to third. He did get himself into a 3-2 count, and he grounded out on the sixth pitch. Later on, his second at-bat, which came in the, the – that was the home run in the fifth inning, that was three pitches. He took a strike, took two strikes, and then bam, two-seam fastball right down the heart of the plate. Bye-bye! And it was out of the air. Third at-bat. Struck out swinging. That was a five pitch at bat, and he struck out in a two two pitch. So uh, he's taking a decent amount of pitches. I mean, when he, when he finds one right down Broadway, he's going to knock it out. Problem is, the pitchers haven't adjusted adjusted to him yet. They don't know what his weak zone is right now, and his and the way he's hitting, he doesn't look like a guy who has weak zone. So pitchers are still trying to figure that out right now. Exactly, and a, a number of these home runs, and I think it was the one last night or yeah. maybe the night before. It was so far inside, but he pulled his hands in, and he got around on it, and it went out, and it went out far. It wasn't no light just over the fence. I mean, but he, that's how strong he is. But he's, he's getting, they try to pitch it inside, and even if it's a ball, and, and I, I forgot who the announcer was, they said, that's a ball. He pulled his hands so far in, and he hit a mammoth home run. Mm-hmm. So he can handle the inside pitch. Mm-hmm. Now let's go outside. But he wasn't chasing. He did mm-hmm. on one strikeout. He did chase. Prior to that, he didn't chase. If he can make sure he doesn't chase the outside pitch, he can handle the inside pitch because he's in home run mm-hmm. on balls. You know, so, if I, if God, I, I mean, then what's his zone? Is it high? Maybe a high strike you can get him out on? I don't know. Um, the low one, you're not going to get it past him. He gets his bat in the ball. So... I mean, if, interesting. I, if I'm the Angels this weekend and I'm pitching to this guy, I'm, I'm trying to go upstairs and inside or low outside, and that's the only, that's the only way you can. That's the only p- spots that I could think you could probably get him out. Now, if he finds a way right. to punch a, a punch a single into right field into left field by going inside, you know, I'll tip my cap. But you know, you got to try to challenge a kid like this who's on fire inside just a little bit. Now, of course, he's probably going to get hit. You know, some of these young guys like to lean over the plate a little bit, takes one off the shoulder, and everyone's like, oh, there they go. They're trying to intentionally hit him. Well, no, they're just trying to pitch inside. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how the Angels right. approach it this weekend. And Bird is supposed to come back Friday. Yeah. Now, we'll see. He's been actually doing really well in, in uh, Scranton. He's already he's got three home runs already. They need... Boy, if Bird could just stay healthy, they need that extra lefty in that batting order. Well, you have D.D., mm-hmm. all right? Hicks is your switch hitter. Walker's a switch hitter, but Walker's not in there every day. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody else, you're right-handed dominant. Stanton, mm-hmm. Sanchez, Judge, um, Austin, Andujar, all those, uh, T- Torres, all six of those, they're all righties. Mm. You need another lefty somewhere. And like I said, Hicks and Walker, you know, are your, oh, and I'm sorry, you got Gardner. So you got Gardner and Geedy are really your only true lefties. Mm-hmm. Hicks and Walker, your um, switch hitters, and mm-hmm. everybody else is right. Mm-hmm. You really need, if you get Bird in this lineup, can you imagine? It's already lengthened. Mm-hmm. Like, who? you know what I mean? Like, they're all doing their job. Judges finally coming more around, too. You're right, Stanton's getting more comfortable. Um, I mean, a lineup. I mean, it's like Judge, Dee Dee, it's scary. Uh, Sanchez or Stanton. It's. I mean, 
And, I don't know where that shut bird in there. And that's it, five guys in the middle. Forget about it. now. Hicks Hicks has been kind of on fire. Yeah. Now you got Torres. The kid is he, on fire. Andrew Har when he, you know, in there. I mean, it's there's no weak link. Gardner is the weak link right now. Yeah, he is. Your lead off hitter. A little bit. I mean, and then and watch watch him go out there and Freddie and get and go three for five. I mean, that's just the way he is sometimes. Yeah. You know, that's, he's just that kind of yeah, hitter. He's streaky. Very streaky, he's streaky, streaky, but he always shows up when it matters, and that's the thing I like about him the most. He always shows up when it matters the most. And how about and you mentioned Hicks? You know, he was hitting two thirteen what about a week ago, and then all of a sudden they bring up Frazier this week. It's like, oh, okay, well maybe I should start hitting, and now he's hitting two fifty four. Had a big series this weekend. Uh, hit five. He's now at five home runs, nineteen RBIs. On the year, so he's now starting to hit, like you mentioned. And I know we, right. I know that I killed this guy in spring training when we last, when we spoke we first spoke about the Yankees for this year. And Walker. Neil Walk, Neil Walker. Oh my God, what a month of May this guy's had. I mean, this guy. Okay, yeah, he's had he's a couple. Of, he's been clutch. He's getting big hits in big spots. He's hitting home runs. He's hitting doubles when they need it the most. He's getting on base. I, I looked at the stats. He was hitting three eighteen for the month of May so far. I mean, the guy's been unbelievable. Mm-hmm. He really has been. And Austin's been doing a good job at mm-hmm. first when he's been in there. He's been hitting. Um, he, he's made some nice, uh, you know, catches at first, you know, digging them out of the dirt. Um, so he's, he's, it's not, I'm not saying they, they don't miss Bird. Mm-hmm. If Bird's healthy and doing what he's supposed to do. But Austin, he's, he's been hitting too. I mean, mm-hmm. he, how many home runs did he hit? The way he had two and one, uh, but he had a couple of, you know, two in a game um, mm. here and there. So, um, everybody has been, even if they've slumped a little, even Sanchez at one point, mm-hmm. they could always only bat in two, whatever. Now he's on fire again. So you got to give these guys time to get into the season. Mm-hmm. It's a lineup. It's a new lineup. Um, they're, they're young. They're, I mean, there's a lot to like here. I love watching them. Mm-hmm. I just love the athleticism. I love the emotion. Um, it's funny, Torres is up at, 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 I guess as a rookie, um, somebody pitched him way inside and he just smiled, you know, like, okay, you know, and he gets back in there and like, you know, they're like almost naive mm-hmm. in a way, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, and, and what about him playing second base? He's yeah. a shortstop mm-hmm. playing second and nobody is talked about. He made some plays that look so easy, almost like a Robinson Cano. Mm. Remember how Cano always looked kind of like just smooth out there, and you Sometimes, know, some people even, Torres is yeah. just he's he's getting to everything. And I know he had that one bad game, but he's you're going to have bad games. Everybody's a human being. I mean, you're going to have a bad game, but overall, he gets to stuff that, and he's got an arm like a cannon. Mm-hmm. So, um, at, but he's playing second. I mean, um, I mean he, he's just a, he's just a gifted athlete. I mean, he, he made a few errors, but you know what? Now, when you're a young player, you're gonna make a lot of errors. I mean, imagine right. imagine him being on a, as a shortstop on a, on a on a team like this. I mean, I know you got DD there, and DD. Hopefully, he doesn't go anywhere, and I know he's gonna be a free agent at the end of the year. And think about that. You know, let's just, you know let's just play it forward here a little bit. Let's just think about that. You know, DD being a free agent. You know, everyone's like, "Oh, well, you got to go out there and sign Manny Machado, right?" Well, maybe not. Maybe you, maybe no. you know, maybe you move a Glaber Torres over to shortstop. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, you know, you don't have to go out there and spend millions upon millions of dollars with all these young pieces they have up there. Uh, oh, by the way, yes, I think the Yankees should keep, should sign Didi Gregorius and pay him his money. Pay that man. Pay the man what he wants. I think so too. I think <laughs> you've got Didi's only 28. Remember, yeah. he's not old. Mm-hmm. So you got Didi. You got Torres, who's twenty one. You got Sanchez, who's mm-hmm. twenty four, and Hicks. Hicks isn't old either. Hicks is twenty five or twenty six. Mm-hmm. Plus, you got Frazier in the wings. If someone went with Hicks, you mm-hmm. know, you got Frazier down there um, who could play center. Um, you got an up the middle. I mean, we're we're going back to the days of what when Bernie was in center and Jeter was at shore and they were mm. all young mm. and Posada behind the plate. I mean, that's what you're talking about. Mm. I mean, that's how far back you had to go where you had a young core, mm-hmm. you know, and if you're strong up the middle and look at the arms. Hicks has got an arm. DD can throw. Torres can throw. Sanchez can throw. Mm. All four of them have great arms too. Mm, they do. So, that's a great up the middle. I don't want Manny Machado. I don't care that he's 25. I don't think he's had two major knee surgeries. 
he has an attitude once in a while. Really? Um, I, I don't want him. I don't, don't mess the app. Like you said, don't mess it up. We don't need Harper either. No. You've got Judge. You've got Stan. You've got Hicks, basically, because Gardner probably will be gone next year. But you've got Frazier in the wings, unless you trade him. You've got Sweeney down there, um, unless you trade him. I mean, there's a lot. There's so many moving parts here. Um, there's so much talent. And AAA. Mm-hmm. AAA is loaded. I know. Right now. They could be on major league teams. Think of all these guys in the Yankees, AAA, Brandy Drury who's been in the majors for a number of years mm-hmm. is in AAA because Andrew Harris outplayed mm-hmm. him, right? I mean, it's doing great. You're not going to send him down. It's, it's, it's like, it's like I mean, just imagine being a minor league team down there in the minor leagues in AAA, right? And you've got to go up against that kind of lineup with all those, all those talented players they have down there on the Yankees. And it's, it's kind of like, uh, it's like the Bad News Bears in a lot of ways. You know, they just kind of, Fall out of the fall out of the bus, and all of a sudden they see the opponent, and they have like coming in in in, uh, in Cadillacs and SUVs, <laughs> Cadillac Escalades, and everything. I mean, it's ridiculous. They're they're, they're fantastic. They're unbelievable right now, all uh, top to bottom throughout the throughout their system. And you know which team you bring Manny Machado. You know which team would, needs Manny Machado the most? How about the Mets? They need Manny Machado the most because they they, they are a complete well, mess right yeah, now. They're talking oh about it. Uh, they didn't go on Robert. I know. I keep talking about it a lot. Well, they're not going to trade for him. I mean, they they have no pe- they have no pieces to trade for him anyway. But if they if they can go into the off season and sign him to a contract, you know what? I would try to do that if I'm the Mets because attitude. I, I, now this attitude stuff was news to me. I didn't know that he had an attitude problem. But even with that, twenty uh, five year old shortstop, you put him out there at short or even third base, that solves all your problems. That solves a lot of your problems on the lat- that side of the infield for the Mets. So to me, well, you're going to have to pay him. Yeah. Well. Uh, let's see here. The, the Wilpons could probably, uh, pony up a couple What is couple your dollars. payroll, the Mets? The payroll, I think Aren't they under 100? They are, I think, at like 89. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on this. So I'm, so I'm saying 89 million. I'm probably someone saying, no, it's not that. I don't know. I have to look it up. Um, they are under, um, under a million, hundred million dollars. And they've been trying to keep that payroll under a hundred million, hundred million dollars for a while now. I would have to look that up, but they Why? should go out there and pay them. What is the reasoning here when you've got SNY, okay, that's bringing in money, uh, City Field, people are going to the games, are they not? You're selling the merchandise, mm-hmm. um, cable, like what, I don't understand, like what, what's the problem? Okay, the Mets payroll, active payroll right now is seventy three is $87 million. Disable this money, and with all the players they have on the DL, it's at $75 million. Um, total payroll, it says here, is 174 But if we're going by, you know, that includes uh, minor league salaries and, bear, and and deferred payments and all that other stuff. But if you're going by active payroll, it's $78 million, $87 million. So it's it's not a lot compared to some of these other teams. It really isn't. No. It really isn't. Not at all. No. I mean... Yeah, court. right now in AAA Scranton, I have their roster here. Um, names that we know. Um, well, of course, Tommy Canely, because he's rehabbing. Mm-hmm. Sheffield had a good outing the other day. Remember, he had a sore shoulder. Mm-hmm. He was very good the other night. The catchers, you got that Hagashaki or whatever, mm-hmm. Higashaki, mm-hmm. who comes up. Eric Kraft, who's been around forever, is your backup. Mm. And your infield. You've got Bird right now down there, Drury. Down there, Adam Lynn, a blast from the past. Mm. How about Lee Mazzilli's son? The Mets, tra- the Mets sent him over there, too. He was with the Mets at the start of spring training, and, and then they sent him over to the Yankees. And he's now with AAA Scranton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Tyler Wade, who was up. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the outfield is Frazier, McKinney. That's so scary. Um, you know, and Shane Robinson. That's Robinson, a, too, was that's up a major for a league while. Out, that's a major league outfield right out. there. That's a major league outfield right, right there. Right there. They could be starting for the race tomorrow. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> right, and really. Oh they need people. Oh so my. this is that's another thing. Wouldn't that be nice? Yes. Ship some of them out and go get Archer. What do you think? Hey, you know what? And this may lead this may lead into one of my next topic here. What do you do at first base if Bird comes back? Uh you got a guy in Tyler Austin who's hitting the ball well. Maybe you ship him to Tampa Bay to get it to Chris Archer. I'm just saying. Because you're gonna have a lot of bodies there at first base, you know? This is what I had come up with. Mm. Um, I was thinking about it yesterday. Yeah. Um, you could throw in 
Tyler Wade. Mm-hmm. Um, who was the other two? There wasn't Frazier, though, but it was... A, I'm going to throw a name at you, like Torres, Ronald Torres. Would you throw him in there? No? Yes. No, 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 no. I would keep him. Okay. Because I, this is how I feel. I think Neil Walker should stay on right now. Because right. he could play third, he could play second, and he could play first. Right. So I think he needs to stay on the roster with Torres as your backup. Okay. I forgot who I taxed yesterday. Um, I don't have the text anymore because I right. deleted them. Mm-hmm. Um, I, but because uh, I said it because they said it, we were talking, we were going back and forth with the game yesterday, mm-hmm. and um, it was a friend of mine. And he said, he goes, the pitching, what is the problem? And I said, well, we need a starter. And I, I threw the names out there, and he said two was good. I didn't think I threw out Austin though. Mm-hmm. We kept Austin because if Bird goes down mm-hmm. again, yeah. You can right now. Bird has to give you, he has not given us a healthy year yet no. at all. Mm-hmm. So that's always a question mark with him. So you had to keep Tyler Austin, but I put in Tyler Wade. Okay. I threw in. I might have thrown in Clint Frazier. Maybe. And, um, and, I, oh, and then I said a pitcher from the minors. Somebody. Okay. I don't know who. Doesn't matter. Um, it's not going to be Sheffield. I don't care. It's not Sheffield. Right not Sheffield. Right. Um, Chance Adams, he hasn't been doing, he's been hot and cold. Um, is he really the real deal or not? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, he's not lights out. Every, remember, he was so touted coming mm-hmm. up, and he hasn't really been consistent. Maybe it's him out there. Maybe you send him Chance Adams. I don't know. To get a mm-hmm. frontline starter, it has to be a top one or two guy. It has to be. Now, you, me- you to, mentioned, to get like, rid of, of course, Archer's the guy you like. I, uh, you know, another name out there, I heard this name mentioned today as well, maybe even Cole Hamels. Now, Hamels pitched well the other day for Texas. No, but that's the thing. But this that, is what I yeah. told my friend. Yeah. There's no way I'm giving up Clint Frazier for Cole Hamels. Cole Hamels is 36, 37. Mm-hmm. I don't care what he's doing right now. You're not getting... Uh, you gotta, you got to give me something younger. I'm not going... I'm not throwing in a Frazier... Or an mm-hmm. Austin, or something like that, or even a Chance Adams, unless you're giving me youth on my side. Well, let me ask. So you, you got to be 28 or younger, right? That's the kind of guy I want. 28 well, or younger that I can lock up for a while if I'm giving away that kind of talent. I don't want an old guy. Again. Well, you know, let me, let me, let me, you know, let's talk about that because you know you got Sonny Gray last year. He was 27 when you got him. You know, I look around Major League Baseball right now. There aren't a lot of guys that are really dominating, you know, let alone just in the American League itself, that are really dominating that would be, that are on bad teams, you know, like on Chicago, on Detroit, Kansas City, right. that make me say, okay, this guy's under 30, let me go out and bring that guy in. Uh, I even go into the National League, you know, I know all that ridiculous talk with uh, Syndergaard and DeGrom, that's not going to happen. The, the, neither team's going to want to trade with That's not going to happen. No. The one, you know, would Matt Harvey be a possibility if he continues to pitch the way he's pitching it with the Reds? Well, you know, anything's Fulmer possible. Uh, who? Filmer from Detroit. Maybe. Filmer. Film, Filmer, uh, maybe. And they talk about a Corbin from Diamondbacks. Well, Arizona's the Diamondbacks in first place, in though. I mean, Aren't they in Yeah, it? they're in first place right now, or, or second place right so now. They're not, they're, they're not going to be shipping out any top pitcher. No. Um, the Dodgers, of course, are, you know, Kershaw over, is over 30 now, you know, and he's going to be a free agent, so you're not getting up pieces and for him. And he's on the DL again. He's on the DL, too. Yeah, he's so. another one I wouldn't want. No. He's another one I want to watch just because of his back, the way he delivers the ball. Do you remember the guy from San Francisco? Who was the one with the crazy delivery? Uh, um, and he's fallen off the face of the earth now with the long hair, Linscombe. short guy. Tim That's Linscombe. it. Tim now, Linscombe. what's happened to him? Oh, he's he ended up getting hurt a number of times, cut his hair, <laughs> and, but he was on the DL. And then he's been, I don't even know if he's with the team right now. You know, did, and, he, is he, did he hook up with the team? No, he's nowhere. He's, I think he was trying okay. out for somebody. I think it was Seattle, like in the minor league somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, here's a name out there. Speaking of the Mariners, James Paxton. I know he threw a no hitter a couple a couple starts ago against Detroit or against Toronto, rather. Um, he is 29. Okay, he's not going to hit 30 until November. He's a left left handed pitcher. That's always a good. That's a that's a plush. Could you know maybe try to get him if Seattle does fall out of it. And right now they aren't showing any signs of that, but. Without Robinson Cano, maybe Seattle does fall out of it. And I know he's getting up there in age. I know he's 32. But, man, you know, if you can get Felix Hernandez off of the Mariners. I know. 
I mean, so I know he's I had a bad year this year, but he's been such a good pitcher. I mean, he's this he, is what the Yankees yeah. should have done, and I keep going back to it. They should have got Verlander, yes, last year for Jacoby. Mm. Straight out, up and down, and maybe throw in a, another level prospect or mm. something or two. That's what they should have done last year, and they could have unloaded that, you know, him. Mm -hmm. And they're going to end up cutting him at this point, I think. I think you should just unload him like you did with uh, A-Rod, get rid of the salary, get him off the roster. Or let's put it this way. If Gardner starts playing a little better, do you package Gardner out? Depends on the team. I mean, you if, trade you, him. If, if you're going to, if you're going to deal with a contending team, you mentioned like, like Arizona and they're still, they still feel that they're in it and you can get like one of their, you know, lower level starting pitchers or something like that. They'll probably take a Gardner or they'll want something, a Gardner with somebody else, of course, with some value. You right. know, maybe they'll try to, maybe they'll consider that. Um, I, I just don't think that you can dump Gardner on, let's say the White Sox. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they would do that. You know what I'm saying? No, and I, to be honest, I wouldn't really trade him in the American League if I could help it. Right. Because then the only time you're going to see him would be interleague and maybe a World Series. Maybe. If he's on that kind of a team. Otherwise, right. he could come back to haunt you. I wouldn't trade him maybe to the American League anywhere. But see, he's, his contract's up at the end of the year. That's why if he, if he starts, I guess they would never do it as they're making this run unless mm -hmm. he totally tanks. But then who would want him? Mm. You know, if he's batting under the Mendoza line, which I think he is right now. Let's see here. 200, but... Um, uh, let's see here. Brett Gardner's stats, I don't think he's hitting that badly, is he? I mean, no, you're yeah, right. He, he's he actually at 230. 180 at one point. He's at 230. What is he at? 233. Close enough. Oh, okay. You're right. He was at 208 on the 10th of on the tenth of May, almost the 10th of April. 10th of mm -hmm. May, so he's hit a little bit better. But still, not producing enough in the RBI. He has only, he's only produced one run in the last two weeks. That's it. It's not going to get it done. No, it's Especially not. at a leadoff, hit, leadoff spot. And he knows that. He's, he's old enough to know that. And how about, yeah. And how about yeah, the, he's been around long enough. Yeah. How, how, about, how about Aaron Boone yesterday getting himself ejected? I finally got, we finally got what I've always wanted. <laughs> Aaron Boone getting ejected. <laughs> going out arguing with the umpire? I don't even know what happened. First of all, the umpire was a little with some of these calls. And 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 not for anything, Aaron Judge, I mean, mm. they just keep calling that low strike on him. He's got the friggin' stirrups. Mm -hmm. How many times do I have to say it? Mm. And they're right by his knees, and they're still calling him by his ankles. Like, are you even looking, mm -hmm. the umpire? I mean, are you even paying attention? Mm -hmm. On some of the stuff he strikes out on looking, they're not strikes. Mm. I mean, it's like, it's like ludicrous. I mm. mean, like they've never had a six, seven guy before, you know, up at the plate. Um, I don't know. And I don't even know what happened. I thought, well, Sanchez was up mm -hmm. and I guess he was arguing. You can't argue balls and strikes. I guess they had enough. Mm -hmm. And that's why he threw Boone out. But that was his first in, in, in ejection. And, uh, he says he got a, a call from his father and, uh, he, like, what, what do you do? <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> like, what the hell's wrong with you? He was getting called. Like, what do you, what do you get to? He's getting called some to his friends at ESPN saying, man, I've never seen him get so angry before. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Like, what happened? Where, where did that oh. come from? <laughs> At least but now, there's another thing. Like, the bullpen has been, it's been um, shaky. Yes. Again, you let the chances go to, to, to two innings. You mm -hmm. can't do that. Robertson got, got shelled they yesterday. Tagged on the, yeah, they got tagged. The first inning he pitched, he was great. Mm -hmm. Second inning, they tack on a run. So the Yankees didn't come back. But that Shreve, I can't stand him. Um, he pitches him back-to-back -back days. One day he does okay, then and then yesterday he gets destroyed. I mean, you know, you can't, yeah. you can't do that all the time with these guys. You know, like a yo -yo, yo yo like that. You can't. But he's so inconsistent. And you know what? This lefty specialist nonsense. Green, mm -hmm. the yeah. Robertson, um, and even Canely can all get lefties out. Mm -hmm. All four of them as a right-handed pitcher. I think that lefty specialist, unless you're Andrew Miller, there's not many really good anymore. Oh, we're bringing him in just for the lefty. Do you know what I mean? Like that, mm -hmm. people, they've gone away from that a little bit. Now they're getting to where they want a, a reliever to go more than one inning, mm -hmm. go like two innings or something. Mm. Um, so I don't think you necessarily. I mean, you should. I guess you should have a lefty on your staff. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we, there's got to be somebody else besides Shreve out there because he just he implodes. 
literally be- implodes. I mean, it's not just, you know, he'll walk batters, um, and then we'll think he's up the home run, and, you know, he's, I'm not confident in him mm. at all. He's, he's not a confidence builder. Um, I, I don't know. I mean... Well, I don't know either. I mean, and you know, going up against the Angels this weekend, to me, you know, Severino, of course, has been fantastic this year. Tanaka's been okay. Uh, he's got the five wins, but you know, you like to see more. You like to see him pitch a little better than he's pitched. It's like every time he well, goes yeah, out but there, every game he gives up a home run. I know every, one. He every get, game he's giving up like three runs every start. It's like it's like the same start it's all the time. Ridiculous. It's like five innings, three runs, six innings, three runs all the time. I mean, at some point, you got he's got to just. Batting down the hatches just a little bit against these teams, and then to me, that's why yeah. they got this Sheffield down there who's doing, who's starting, who's doing better now that he's his shoulders better, mm-hmm. and um, I think they're riding him because he's a lefty, which mm-hmm. is also good. You might see him after, you might see him the end of the summer. Mm. Come on, maybe. Now I don't know. Now the Angels haven't published their entire rotation. They have Haney tomorrow. Now I don't know when Tiny is going to pitch. If he pitches Saturday against the, against Gray, that's going to be that's going to be interesting for a couple reasons. One with Otani pitching Yankee Stadium, the whole thing with him not coming to the Yankees and all that stuff. But for Sonny Gray, I mean, it's getting to a point where now, okay, I know he pitched great against Kansas City. Kansas City outside Mustakas has nobody, and, and Paris has nobody in the lineup. Um, so I don't right. know. I don't even know if I want to count that. But he's he's going up against a good team. He's got to find a way to give the Yankees. At least, in my mind, six quality innings. I mean, he can't get bombed and, and walking guys all over the ballpark like he's been doing so far. This is big for Gray this week. Yeah, he's um, he really did pitch well against Kansas City, but he was um, he wasn't being too fine. Whatever Romine put down, he mm-hmm. threw, mm-hmm. and he can't think. He thinks too much. Gray. Mm. That's part of his problem. Get into a rhythm, and Romine said it. He was in a rhythm. And he was just going and going. That's what you have to do as a pitcher. I was never in the major leagues, mm. granted. But right. I was a pitcher for a long time. And I know exactly what they're talking about. I don't care what level you're on. If you're little league or if you're in the major league, you as a pitcher do want to get into a rhythm. I wanted the ball. I didn't take a lot of time. Some of these people take so much time. As soon as soon If I felt good and I was really, you know, getting the strikes over and pitching well, I was like to the catcher, I want it back. I want it back. Like just, Mm -hmm. you know, I wanted it back right away and I'm back on the mound and I'm ready to throw. Mm. So that's what you want to do. You want to get into that rhythm where you're feeling the flow. Yeah. And he was, someone said he was in a rhythm and he was, you know, when you get that choppiness and a guy gets on base and then you start holding the ball and, you know, you are throwing a first, mm-hmm. and you know things all start coming apart for you, mm-hmm. and you're thinking too much, and uh, yeah, that's when things start happening. But then you noticed his delivery; they changed it a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's almost like um, when a man is on base and they mm-hmm. go to the stretch; it's close to it, yeah. so it's very compact. And there's not all this rigmarole or all this extra, just you get it, you throw it, basically. Mm. And it worked. Mm-hmm. Now, let's see, like you said, can you take this into multiple games in a row? You're mm-hmm. not going to win every game, and we understand that. But you need to do like two, three, four look good, even if you end up losing a game somewhere. Mm-hmm. You've got to look good, and you've got to get your pitches over. You can't implode. No, and um, that's what we need Sonny Gray to do. He needs to pitch well, and you know, after the after this series against the Angels, it's going to be a great series against Houston because they're coming in here and they're going to have their three big guys going in that series. They're going to have Verlander on Monday. They're going to have Charlie Morton, who has had incredibly. I don't know what he's. He must be eating his Wheaties like five times a day because he's six and zero this year with a one ninety four ERA. He's been Charlie Morton has been unbelievable this year. And then, wow. have Keich- and then you have Keiko after that. And we all know how Keiko's pitched against the Yankees at Yankee Stadium in, in his career. So you've got the three big guys going in there for Houston. Uh, and the Yankees have Jermon, who out- after that, uh, that no-hitter he had for six innings, he has he's gotten killed his last two starts, give up 12 run runs his last two starts, going up against Verlander. And then you got CeCe on Tuesday and then Severino against Keiko on Wednesday. So... That is going to be a phenomenal series uh, against Houston this week. Absolutely, and uh, there you, you're po- you're possibly looking again at the American League Championship Champ- Series. You could be matchup possibly. 
Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of things have to fall right. And like you said, when we started the show, uh, how the AL East is the Yankees Red Sox. Mm -hmm. The Red Sox are not going to go away Mm -hmm. um, unless they have some injury. You know, right now, J.D. Martinez, Bettis, uh, I mean, Bettis is on fire. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they're carrying the team right now. So we'll see. But their pitching, too, is... Not solid, mm. per se. They're starting rotation with Price in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they've had issues, too. Yeah, outside of sales. Um, just like the great. Yankees have, it, have had yeah. issues with their starters. Mm. Yeah, I mean... But the Yankees both end better. It is. Even though they're having, they have a little rough patch right now, when Kainley comes back, Warren comes back, um, you know, they're all... When they get them all their ducks in a row... Mm-hmm. Per, you know, go body by body through the whole, you know, compare them. Mm-hmm. The Yankee bullpen's better. And that's what would bring it home except, well, for but Kimbrell. But I swear to God, Kimbrell doctors his ball and nobody pays attention mm. to that cap. Look at the cap again. Mm. Oh, yeah, you got to pay. And I can't believe up to this point, nobody has called him on it. I have not noticed it all. myself. I'll be honest this with you. This happened last year. And I noticed it. I said, look, mm-hmm. look at his cap. Mm-hmm. His bill, and then he was he came in a couple times against the Yankees. It's a perfect round right at the tip, mm-hmm. and then he pulls on that, and he does that stupid thing with his arm, which whatever the hell that's all about. It's like it's like Mark Sidrich. Oh yeah, with Kimberly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. I don't know why. I don't and know why he does he that. But he pulls on the cap every time before he goes to the ball. You're not going to tell me there's something whether it's Vaseline. Or rising like, or something. You know what I mean? Like, not even like it's clear. It's whatever, but it, you can see it. You can see the circle at the top of the bill, and it's dark. Whether it's the blue bill or I don't know if they use different caps. Didn't, didn't they? But, didn't, didn't they take out? Didn't they take down? I mean, I'm talking about like Major League Baseball for that matter. Didn't they take? I think it was um, Pineda. That was it. Was Pineda who got caught with doing that, right? And they penalized right. him. So and and, and yeah, somehow but he had pine tar. Yeah, pine tar. But Kimbrell's doing something this that is, is not. I'm yeah. telling you, it's either Vaseline mm-hmm. that he he swirls in there, or mineral oil, or something, and then he goes. But just notice it the next time you see him. I will fish. pay attention to. I will look for it next time because I've I've never noticed. Pay it attention to the bill of the cap and how he goes to it, mm-hmm. and it's it's not rotten. and it's not all over the place. No, their hands and absolutely not. Maybe maybe what uh, Kimball should do is uh, give, send that stuff to uh, Jerry Smiley of the Mets. Maybe he can use that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't stand. I heard the other day somebody say, "Oh, Kimball's going to be in the Hall of Fame." Oh, please said, stop! No, no, don't even start that crap. That's ridiculous. Right? At this no point, that's point, at this point, his career he hasn't even earned that. Sorry. I mean, give me a break. I mean, he, has, he hasn't even saved the World Series. Can you, can, can you go out there and save a World Series game first? I mean, Jesus. It would be nice. Seriously. Yeah. And then the Yankees rocked him twice now. Mm-hmm. He's blown saves against the Yankees this year twice. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's not the, maybe it's Walgreens mineral oil opposed to Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> he's, getting, he's getting used mineral oil from Pathmark. <laughs> Pathmark's yeah. closed, yeah, everybody. It's not working. <laughs> Dated yeah. 1989. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, right, oh my goodness. On. Anyway, Yankees rolling right now, looking pretty good. They got uh, a very big week this week as they going to take on the Angels and the Astros again. Michael Cohen, Karen, are they in cat with you? Now we have another part of the show that's coming up a little bit later. We're going to dive into the NFL and talk about the NFL's decision on the national anthem protest. And trust me, we've got some hot takes on that. So keep it right here, folks, on the Sports Talk Nation. Follow us on the Twitter at OpenMikeNJ, Facebook.com slash OpenMikeProgram, and right here, like and subscribe on the Sports Talk Nation.